as soon as you say you don't want to talk about the past, that's the first thing I'm going to ask you about now. Because <laughs> when you made your debut, however many years ago, how were you feeling yeah. then, and how do you feel now making your debut as a coach? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, I still remember exactly that. Thirty minutes just before you know you, you're going out for your warm up and you've got them butterflies. Uh, I remember that on my debut, uh, but you know, again, it was like an excitement sort of sense more than a nervous sort of sense. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit different when you're coaching because you're not as in control of it, control of it as you are as a player. Obviously, when you're playing, you are out there in that moment in control of you know, your actions and what you're doing. Whereas when you're coaching, um, you're on the sideline with everyone else and you're kind of a, a spectator, aren't you, until you, you're in at half-time and you might say one or two points and, and things like that. So um, what I will say is I'm, I am really happy with how the group's responded to what, you know, we've been doing as a coaching group. Um, and they they seem like they've got, bit of confidence and an edge about them in terms of uh, what work they've put in. So I think just a sense of excitement from a coaching point of view that he's finally seasons upon us and we can start you know, going week to week and, and testing what we've been working on. How did you come to the decision on the, the captaincy and how important do you see that role within Rugby League and Super League in 2023? Um, I think it's a bit of a cliche answer for you, Richard, but uh, you need more than one leader in your in your group. Now, Tash were an obvious uh, choice for, for your captaincy. I think every single time he plays, he, he gives you that 8, 9 out of 10 performance, doesn't he? And he's a, he's a player that others look up to on that field. And that were really important to give him that, that recognition. Uh, but I'd say there's a number of players that you could name. You know, Pitts has been excellent. How he, he's been chatting. You've got Jordi uh, Crowver as your vice-captain. You've got Kev, who's obviously uh, coming. Renner for Tony spoke well. Uh, Liam Kay, uh, Liam Wood, Riesling, you know, Gaskell and Mason. There's there's that many players that you could go through that's added some value to to the group this year that I think I'd be doing a, a disservice to him if I if I tried singling a few out. So to answer your question, I think it's really important that there's a lot of leaders in your team for different reasons, um, and that's what one thing we've been trying to focus on is is getting people to to be willing to lead and feel comfy leading because that's that's what it's going to need on the field. You know, end of the day, we don't cross that whitewash with them and go onto the field the way it's, it's them. So it's really important that they feel comfy enough in each other's company that. Uh, they can say what needs saying to to produce an high performance. You mentioned you, you'll be almost a spectator come kick off tomorrow. What's it going to be like standing there with another, as you well know, a few thousand coaches around you with, with their thoughts and milling around? It's weird. Um, I've never really minded that side of it. Um, you know, that's beauty of sport, as I've said before, that everyone's entitled to an opinion. Um you kind of drown out that noise because you're that focused on what's going going on in the game that it just becomes a bit of a white noise. Now, obviously, you hear one or two comments. Uh, normally, it's someone that I know shouting some sort of obscenity at me. <laughs> uh, but you don't really get too hurt upon it. It's it's professional sport. And, you know, when you're in these sort of jobs, you you know it comes with the territory. So, yeah, I'll be just focusing on on, on our team and, and my own uh performance in terms of our delivered messages that I want to deliver. John Keir had his little finger thing. Have you got any quirks yeah. that could be picked up by the cameras? I will have lads uh, in their own WhatsApp group. I'm sure they've got um, quite a few things that, that I've been doing. Uh, probably not aware of them. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll have a couple. I remember the old JK finger to which well, yeah. And uh, just a final one. John Harbin, another one of your predecessors, once referred to the players as fighting like mongrel cattle dogs. I think it was before your before your time as a player. What kind of uh, what kind of uh, breed of dog are we expecting from Wakefield? This is underdogs have been mentioned, but what kind of what kind of breed of dog are we going to see out there on the field? <laughs> Good question. Um, I know exactly what he's saying. Listen, uh, it don't matter what breed of dog you want. You you just want that that pack mentality, don't you? You want to be going out there hungry. You want to be the hardest working team, you want to be sticking together and working on so you can pick whatever breed of dog you want. As long as they've got them characters, I'll be I'll be quite happy. Yeah.